Necessity is interesting because it puts a person between two very difficult alternatives. On the one hand, there is their possible or even likely loss of life, and on the other hand, there is the commission of a criminal act. This raises a number of difficult philosophical or even moral questions. So, for example, if a person is starving, should they be allowed to steal bread? If a ship is sinking, should it be right to throw someone overboard to alleviate the weight? Now, obviously, the courts are not very fond of making these deep philosophical or moral decisions and have tried to avoid it as much as they can. Norrie, who is an academic, has even suggested that necessity could leave the door open to anarchy. Nevertheless, necessity is a really important defence because it allows people to commit certain acts when there's no realistic or sensible alternative. With this in mind, let's have a quick look at the defence of necessity. Necessity could potentially come up as part of a problem question, but is perhaps more likely due to the moral or ethical concerns to come up as part of an essay question in an exam or more likely a coursework topic. So that's the way that we're going to approach it, although hopefully the principles will be applicable within a problem style scenario as well. Now, the nature of the threat involved with necessity is normally a danger to life. In other words, your life must be threatened in order to commit the criminal act. Um, this was a point that was emphasised by Lord Denning in Southwark London Borough Council and Williams in 1971. And he points out that if hunger itself were an excuse for stealing, this would open the door uh, to all kinds of lawlessness and disorder. Obviously, the main concern here from the court's point of view is that if necessity is expanded too widely, there is a potential floodgates argument for more defences to flow through and for people to get away with criminal acts, which is obviously what the courts are trying to prevent. However, it has expanded to an extent, so it could potentially be seen to include a threat to a person's mental health as well. And this was the argument that was put forward persuasively in the famous medical law case of Gillick and West Norfolk and Wisbeck Area Health Authority from 1986. If you're interested in that case, it's definitely worth a look from a mental health point of view. One of the key cases in that area. Perhaps the most um, common use of necessity as a defence is in cases of murder, and this goes back to the famous case of Dudley and Stevens, 1884. The case involved people on a boat, they were stranded at sea, and they decided to eat the cabin boy on the basis that they would starve otherwise. The defence of necessity failed in this case because Normally, murder is no uh, is not excused with necessity. You shouldn't take someone else's life in order to even save your own. And this is an argument that has flowed through some of the other defences that we've looked at previously. Um, Cardozo Justice, the um, American judge, pointed out there is no rule of human jettison in his writings, and this sums up the point quite nicely. Nevertheless, the courts have perhaps moved to, uh, away from this. Um, idea of um, murder and no defence of necessity in those circumstances. The case of Re A Children 2000 involved conjoined twins and it was ne necessary in to perform an operation that killed one twin in order to save the other twin's life and in those circumstances the defence of necessity was raised and appears to suggest that there are some circumstances when necessity can be a defence to murder. Before we finish there are a couple of other considerations so in the case of doctors necessity normally comes up towards end of life care and euthanasia in particular. Now euthanasia isn't allowed but doctors can accelerate death if that is in the course of proper treatment to relieve pain. So administering a patient with morphine, for example, may reduce that patient's lifespan. But if it alleviates their pain in the meantime, doctors can't be considered to do everything necessary to save a life if that would be pointless or potentially do more harm to the, uh, to the patient. Um, a famous case was the trial of Dr David Moore that happened in 1999, that happened at the Newcastle Crown Court, and he'd done exactly that. There was a number of cases where he had 
eased patients into death essentially and even though uh, this did accelerate death it wasn't seen as euthanasia because it was in the course of what would be considered normal treatment in those circumstances. A duty of care may also raise the defence of necessity because part of that duty of care may involve doing harm to others. There's a famous case of a, an Australian naval officer who, when realising that a fire had started in the, naval, in the engine room, sorry, um, decided to close the door and secure the area in order to contain the fire. Now, there were four naval uh, personnel in that room at the time who died from um, burning and the fumes that were emitted. But by doing so, the naval officer had essentially saved the lives of the rest of the crew on that ship by not allowing the fire to spread. And in those circumstances, the uh, military court decided that it was the right thing to do in those circumstances. So it comes back again to this idea I mentioned at the start between facing two al horrible alternatives. On the one hand, we have the um, crime of murder or manslaughter. But on the other hand, we have the um, necessary alternative of saving the lives of the rest of the crew. And those have to be balanced by the courts and they have to make that difficult moral decision um, as to what is correct in the circumstances. What would what would a person do and what should a person be allowed to do in terms of a criminal act if it means saving lives? Necessity has always been a part of the criminal law as a defence, dating back to the case of Reniger and Forgossa from 1552. Um, but that doesn't mean that the courts necessarily like it. And as I've mentioned, they don't like making those moral decisions, especially ones that allow for the commitment of a criminal act. Um, I hope you found this video useful. As I've mentioned, necessity doesn't come up too often. Um, it may be as part of a problem question that you want to discuss it, or more likely as part of a wider essay question or coursework um, type answer that you're writing. Um, if you did enjoy this video, then remember to leave it a like. If you're working on other videos on criminal defences, then make sure to check out some of those as well. Um, also subscribe for more videos in the future um, and leave a comment below if you do have any questions or comments or queries about anything that you've just heard and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks very much for watching. Bye!